Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff Mixing Course. This course is 15 lessons long, and in these 15 lessons, you will learn to mix a whole track from start to end using only Ableton Live's own stock devices. What you will learn is a mixing workflow that works for any type of genre and any type of song, the key concepts of mixing, awesome techniques, and ways to apply the Ableton Live stock devices into your mix, as well as some fun tips and tricks. While watching this course, you can actually practice and do exactly what I'm doing in the videos using a song that I have created just for this course. You can download the stems and Ableton Live practice session from the link down below. No previous mixing experience needed. I will explain everything to you and you can get started with your mixing. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified every single time I post a new video for this course. Let's get started with mixing. This is the second last video of this mixing course. So in this video, you will learn how to adjust all the volumes between the groups, between all the tracks, and we're gonna start finishing our track but before that, I want to just thank this mixing course sponsor, which is called DistroKid. DistroKid is such an amazing distribution company that I personally use to publish all my music through. So they have so many tools that support independent artists before and after the release of the song. And one of these is called Hyperfollow. I'm going to talk more about Hyperfollow in the end of this video. So go and check that out and also check out DistroKid link down below. But hey, now, Let's get into this video, this tutorial, second last one. So in this one, we will now balance all the volumes, balance all the volume faders and prepare our mix for the final stages. When I started up, some of the things I was thinking the most is like, is the vocals too loud? Are they too quiet? How do I know how much is enough and all this? So we will talk about all that. Firstly, we will go through everything in group. So we will start from the low end. So I'm going to go to the drums first. We're going to start from there. And what I will do is that I'm going to select all the drums. So three of them. There we go. And I'm just going to go and put the kick to minus 12. I'm going to find a section where they all play. And then now what we will do is we're going to bring the, uh, the snare in. And then when we recognize that it's too loud, we're going to take it notch back because our ears quite often recognize when something is too loud, but we don't recognize when it's enough. <laughs> so we're going to work on that. We're going to use that as on our advantage and then notch, notch, what a notch, notch is like four, three to five decibels. That's a notch. Just like, hmm, goes up and then goes, Okay, so we're gonna go and add the snare. Too quiet. Too quiet. Too loud. And notch back. There we go. Hi hat's the same thing. Too loud. Notch back. I actually want them to be even a little bit quieter. So the important thing, what we need to also remember with all of this is that volume is part of the illusion of what's in front of the room and what's in the back of the room. As much as we can create space by using reverb, delay, compressor, and all these different elements. The volume is one of the ones that we're like, presence, is it very like on our face or is it some behind something? So example, this hi-hat, I, I want it to be kind of sit behind this kick and snare. Okay, I also added a little bit more resonance on the EQ of the snare because I was like, it sounded a little bit dull. This is this is the um, a problem when you're creating any kind of mix. You start like adjusting things and listening things. So be careful of that as well. We're gonna do that in the next lesson uh, where we start adjusting everything. So 
Be careful of not getting trapped in that. Do one step at a time and you'll be fine. Step at a time and you'll be fine. And now we're going to do low end. So we're going to uh, see the drums and this, uh, the bass all together. Usually I always have this in zero, but because I'm doing this screen, this tutorial, I have it lower. But we need to make sure that our headroom is correct. So example, if I have it there, it's very loud. So I'm going to make sure that this drums is in minus 12. So I have an automation there. So I need to go here, select all the automation lane and then drop that into minus 12. There we go. Okay, we're going to bring in the bass. Too loud. Okay. And now we're going to go into the mids. Again, everything first down. Too loud, too loud. And we're going to even put the group track also to minus 12. So we're going to go to the chords. And we're going to put them in 12. gonna put the strings on it as well Okay, and now we have the vocals. So exactly the same as we did before. We want the vocals to sit in the mix really nicely. There's the automation on the main vocal, but that is fine. We can now take everything down again, exactly the same way, way that we did before. And we're gonna now bring the vocal automation of that track into minus 12. Actually, it was in minus 12, perfect. So I'm actually going to just uh, re-enable that. So it's in minus 12 and everything else, we're going to just now match it. I'm going to bring this in for... Too loud, and so I want a little bit lower. You give me a... There we go. It sits, sits nicely on the back. So this one is interesting. Love me tonight, love me tonight, love me tonight. Too loud. Love me tonight. So I'm taking a little bit back, but because it doesn't happen all the time, this vocal, I'm going to see how it sounds otherwise. So it just goes in the end. Want to love you the way you love me tonight. That's pretty good. That's really good. And then we have these three happening. Tonight. Okay, and we're going to bring in the vocal. And because they're last chorus, I feel like they can be slightly louder than the first two. So around 12, tiny bit more than 12. And this is probably the same, just below 12, somewhere here. Tonight. Amazing. So basically, I just made sure that the main ones are in 12 and everything else is like, is it too loud? Yes, we recognize when it's too loud and we just take it back. Okay, so we have now balanced all the vocals. Now we have three faders left. So we have only the groups. So now I'm going to bring down all the three and we're going to bring in the low end first. 
and put that in around 12. Too loud, just sits under there. A little bit less than 12. Really fine. And we bring vocals. Now I just hear that I want the bass to be a bit louder, so I'm gonna go there and just add that a little bit more. Vocals a bit too loud. We can balance them separately, so we can listen, example, mids and lows together. I feel like they were too quiet. And then let's listen to mids and vocals together. Sounds pretty good. And then all together. And how does the headroom look like? pretty healthy to me so it's between minus six and minus 24 which is the area that we want to stay in which is great because then that means that in mastering we have enough uh, headspace headroom headroom not headspace that's the app <laughs> headroom to go and actually like make it bigger and more powerful so in the next point we're gonna see how we're gonna finish this track and what are the last steps to finish your mix Yay! Hey, I just want to talk to you a little bit about DistroKit Hyper Follow. So this is actually a feature on DistroKit that I have personally used so much. Just a couple uh, weeks ago, I published my single, No, I'll Do It. Oh, no, I'll do it. And uh, what you can do is that in here, in the settings, find Hyper Follow, and I can see this even before anything has been published. So when I click this, I get this page that is fully customizable. So I can go here on the right and this edit this page and I can add the artist, song title, cover work, my YouTube channel, a music video, which I put, song release days, uh, Spotify pre-saved, also music links so I can add all of the ones that the music is published in. Also my social media links. So in the end, how it looks like is this. So you can also preview the track from here. It's, it's basically the one stop shop for everything, every single link to do with your release. So it will have all the uh, shops, all the music videos or any kind of merch you wanna put. It's one link with everything and it's free from DistroKid. So when I started advertising for my uh, my single coming up, so you can see here on my Instagram, I started to post about my music video and all that. I was asking people to pre-save my, my track and this was the link I wanted them to get to because they I wanted them to press this button and also see that there's a music video coming and all that. So what I did is that here in Linktree, no, I'll do it, listen here. So what it does, it takes it to this website because some people are not in Spotify, some people are not in iTunes. It will take you to this website that then takes them to wherever they want to. Link to DistroKid where you can sign up, where you can release your music and where you can then use this hyperlink all down below in a link. So go there and have a look. I basically publish all my music through DistroKid, so I definitely recommending it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe, please hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post. Usually I always post all my Patreon followers here, but in this mixing course, I am now thanking all my patrons in the info box down below. If you want to be part of 
that family where I do weekly live stream Q and A's. I give feedback, I give free stuff, presets and templates. If you want to be part of that all and amazing community, then please check out the link also down below. Also remember I have merch, so check that out as well down below. Have a very lovely day and I'll see you next Sunday because I post every single Sunday. Bye.